Hi everyone, uh, my name is Matko, I'm a research scientist at Google DeepMind. I'm um, originally from Croatia where I finished my undergrad and then after a series of couple of things I kind of decided to pursue my PhD career outside of the country, did my PhD in the UK. So if by any chance any one of you over here are interested in like doing a PhD, starting a PhD, what does, what does that mean, what do you do over there? feel free to ask me at any point in time whatever you're interested in, as well as what it is like to work in academia, industry, and yeah, whatever. I'm going to be here throughout the whole event, so yeah. Uh, this first tutorial is a tutorial on like reasoning, and we're going to have like a very basic problem that we're presenting over here, like what is reasoning? So if I ask I don't like random people over here, you might tell me certain things which might be related, but you might also like focus on certain things that you kind of think that reasoning is, but then there's always a counterexample that, well, it's not exactly that. It might be something different. So we just wanted to show that it's, it's like a buzzword recently, specifically like a buzzword, which a lot of people have been mentioning in AI because it's like one of those things that we're missing. So whenever you hear people saying like, oh, LLMs can do wonderful things, we can do this, we can do that, we can write like an angry email to someone, we can, I don't know, like, like cheat off a test or something like that, but we're missing reason. So like, what is exactly that critical piece of thing that we're missing? Because we obviously want to nail this when we want to get to the point of building a generalist agent, a general, like general AI that's going to do all the intelligent stuff because reasoning is the key. Now to understand, uh, to understand that, uh, like, we, like why do we want to understand what reasoning is? Well, we want to evaluate it primarily because we're saying it's a thing that we're missing. So how do we know exactly how is it missing? How do we build the thing and how do we know exactly how to evaluate what the thing is supposed to do? And there's a bit of a roadblock over here because it's kind of hard to define. You can open a Wikipedia article, you're gonna get something like structured thought processes that lead you to, I don't know, execution of certain things and whatnot. It's not necessarily that. You're gonna see like, oh yeah, logical reasoning. It's not just logical reasoning. There's mathematical reasoning, there's algorithmic reasoning. And there's statistical reasoning. So these things are not necessarily just logic and just like plain rules. So yeah, like what, what exactly is it? But yeah, you're gonna find out to one, like about one particular type of reasoning in our tutorial and we're gonna focus on like elements of algorithmic reasoning which is close to mathematical reasoning. And it's a really nice tutorial that we kind of envisioned for you to get a good grasp on how to build a system from scratch with an existing data set with certain models that you can play around with. And yeah, that's gonna be like quite nice. So yeah, like just trust your tutorial leads on this. So what is reasoning to, uh, to Petar and myself? Well, kind of like, we don't want to say certain things over here for you to take it as ground truth. Like, by all means, this is not the thing you're supposed to learn over here. You're supposed to get, like, our vision of it. Why, like, what we're interested in reasoning. Uh, yeah, give you food for thought and, like, use as a roadmap to, like, to build something particular, like, concrete of use. So we look at it as a like, robust procedure for solving in instances of a problem. Robust in a sense that it should apply to multiple instances of the same problem. It shouldn't fail at certain things. So when you're doing logical reasoning, you're doing that reasoning in the space of problems with ca which can be solved by logical reasoning and they're robust to certain smaller perturbations of that. Specifically, when it comes to human reasoning. Sure, logically we know like inductive, deductive reasoning, there's also abductive reasoning, which is like, hmm, what is that about? Well, when you kind of make a guesstimate, you're kind of forced to, to make a conclusion, so you make a conclusion based on your like wild, almost like wild guess, and sometimes that works. Is that the type of reason that you should focus on? Maybe not, but that's more or less what LLMs today are kind of doing. So it's good to know like these different types of reasoning, but yeah, we want reasoning to be robust. It doesn't have to be fully accurate because again, like human reasoning is often approximate. We're doing guesstimates, like we're doing guesswork, 
Why? Because we don't have enough time, we don't have enough information. For various reasons, we can't do that in the proper way that we'd like to do that. So we make approximations, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be symbolic. It's not just logic. It's not just like particular types of logic, like, like I don't know, like temporal logic and stuff like that that people create because they want to explain certain reasoning processes. It can be latent type of reasoning. Uh, done in this case, like in a model in a purely latent space, it can be different, again, like types. Uh, but it should behave consistently. Uh, one thing about reasoning is that we apply it on, on all different processes that we want to solve. So we want to, able, we want to be able to provide, the, to use it consistently over all the instances of the problem. It just doesn't work if we've got the same type of a problem and this kind of falls apart, breaks. And you can see that on LLMs. If you're using LLMs, for example, to calculate certain things, if your LLMs don't have an access to a particular tool, they will break after some time because they are not consistent, and that's it. And what we care about over here is, in particular, out of distribution generalization. And when we're saying that, we want a model that is able to capture reasoning concept like equally well in all instances of such problems. So we've got a small problem, we want to be able to reason on it. If we've got like medium-sized problem, large problem, we want to be able to reason on those two. If we've got like huge problems, if they're still amenable to reasoning, we need to be able to apply reasoning. So that's why we want it to generalize out of distribution. And now for a reasoning time bomb. Peter. Thank you very much, Matko. So Matko has introduced the motivation for the tutorial that we will be showing to you today. And now we're going to go on a journey to find what I coined a reasoning bomb. And uh, think of a reasoning bomb as a simple example that you can feed into a frontier language model and cause it to start producing nonsense or pretend that it's producing useful things but still given nonsense as the final thing. The reason why I use the word bomb in here, some of you might be old enough to remember the term Google bomb. I don't know if you, there used to be a time when Google used uh, things like page rank almost exclusively to figure out which pages to retrieve to you. So basically it only used the structure of the graph of the internet. So that meant if someone was particularly malicious, they could create fake pages with lots of links pointing on certain ways under certain contexts. And I mean, Google the term Google bomb and you will see what I mean. But there were many ways in which you could mislead the system by just adding lots of fake links in there. So similarly, a reasoning bomb is a very potentially simple prompt that you can construct in a relatively easy way, which should be quite easy for humans to make sense of, but the language model just falls apart, right? So in our hunt for this reasoning bomb, we are going to open, well, I trust many of you or all of you have brought your laptops. Uh, if you have uh, access to the internet, I will suggest that you open your favorite language model. I am going to open Gemini. But uh, <laughs> yes, wait, actually in this case, I need it in Chrome. Yeah, there we go. So this is on Viorica's account, of course. Um, so uh, you can open Claude 3.5, you can open GPT, whichever one you prefer, and let's try to break them together. Uh, what I'm going to start by asking uh, Gemini to do is to calculate something seemingly simple, like two times six. And hopefully, yeah, he, uh, Gemini has been improving their problem solving abilities and they do successfully calculate that two times six equals 12. Let's try to make things a bit more complicated. Let's do minus two times six. Hopefully it will still know how to do that. Yes, minus 12, great. Now let's do minus of minus two times six. I hope you see where this is going. So, in this particular prompt, yes, it learns that the minuses cancel out. Wonderful. Now let's try minus of minus of minus two times six. I'm wondering how many minuses do you think we need to add before it completely falls over? It still works with three minuses. Okay. One, two, three, four. <laughs> so now it should give us 12. 
Okay, wow, well done, Gemini. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Because this is a very simple algorithm for humans to do, right? You just see the expression and you immediately know what you need to do. Oh, uh, this thing has four minuses. It's still correct. It's still correct. Or did I put five? Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so it failed to even, there you go. This is what I mean when I say it gives you the illusion of reasoning taking place because it sounds like a plausible explanation. It even says like the same minuses should cancel out. Yet you see that it hasn't, it hasn't just failed to do the multiplication, it failed to copy the input properly so it could start doing stuff on it, right? As those of you roughly uh, properly identified and I completely missed it, Gemini even failed to report the correct number of minus signs, right? So. Congratulations, we have constructed our reasoning bomb. And there's a very specific reason I picked this reasoning bomb on various models I tried. When you put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight minuses, you break both Gemini Advanced and ChatGPT4 and Claude 3.5 Sonnet. So this is a bomb that breaks all of the top tier frontier models that we are currently aware of at the, at the front of the class. And uh, these are not that easy to find, ones that break all three models, because these are simple prompts. If you hard code certain things in your model, the model will basically learn to figure it out by itself on some sizes. So it's hard, to, it's easy to find examples that break a particular language model. It's not as easy, but it still should be relatively easy to find examples that break all three of them, right? So we actually encourage you after this tutorial is done, uh, play with your favorite language models, try to find more of these bombs and maybe report them in Slack or something. It's gonna be really fun to see how, you, how you've arrived at these different things. But, <laughs> which one? Three times six. Three times six? <laughs> Yeah, and uh, Matko mentioned things like multiplication. Actually, this is a simple instance of a much deeper problem that our frontier models are facing right now. This here is the accuracy of uh, Gemini 1.0 Ultra on multiplying n by n digit numbers. You can see already three by three digit numbers, the accuracy is horrible. And this is not a trend that you only observe with Gemini. GPT-4 has very similar performance characteristics. The paper from Shen and others from Microsoft Research explores this in a lot of detail. And I find this to be the most ironic statement of them all, because as you probably know, modern day frontier model transformers have hundreds of billions of parameters. They compute hundreds of billions of multiplications. So they should have the circuitry to perform multiplication in there. And they do this just to generate one token, right? I'm not talking about multiple tokens one after another. And they cannot multiply three by three digit numbers correctly. So there is like, I hope this gives you as stark evidence as any that these models are not really reasoning in the proper sense of the word. And maybe more generally, like you can agree or disagree with what we're saying here. But I hope if there's one thing you take away from this talk and the tutorial afterwards is that solving reasoning is much harder than maximizing a reasoning benchmark, especially if that benchmark is static. Benchmarks can be gained, you hill climb over a long time, you end up basically oversaturating it. Okay, so hopefully this gives you a nice kind of introductory flavor of the things we're gonna be exploring today. And this is the rough roadmap. Well, we have exceeded some of these time limits, but we will adjust accordingly. So what's gonna happen next is you're gonna be split into breakout rooms and you will head out to breakout rooms while you'll work together with our TAs to try to uh, find out how to train and most importantly evaluate these systems for reasoning capabilities. And hopefully by the end of the tutorial, you'll have interesting things to discuss with your TAs. And the parts that you will encounter in this tutorial are first, how to train a model to robustly execute computation. So unlike just a general purpose language model training, how to actually train a model to do these kinds of things more robustly. Then you'll play around with different model algorithm and hyperparameter variations to see what works better and what doesn't work as well. And finally, if there's enough time at the end, for those of you who are particularly keen, there is a part of the tutorial where you will actually be training a large language model, Gemma 2B, to try to be a better reasoner than what we've just seen here from Gemini.